What's going on everyone? My name is Matt Morgus from The Weekender and we're here with uh, Jack and Nick from Bayside at the Trocadero in Philadelphia. They have a show here tonight that saves the day, yep. Transit and I Am Avalanche. So you guys took a little break uh, from your, your last record to when Killing Time came out. Uh, why don't you tell me just a little bit about what happened in between then? Uh, I know you guys had label changes and stuff, so you know, uh, what was like the writing process for Killing Time over that long period of time? Well, I mean, we got off victory, and the plan was to kind of take our time in finding a label that was going to fit with what we wanted to do, and also take our time in writing a record, which is something we had never done with victory, where it was kind of, with victory, it was always, um, I'd say, you know, victory would come approach us and say, we'd like you to make a record, and they would give us, like, two months, basically, like, write a record and record it in two months, and then we'll have your masters there won't be really any promotion or publicity for that. We'll just put it right out. So between writing a record and starting to write a record and having it in the store was about two and a half months usually. So with this, we really wanted to take our time, write, write longer, kind of rewrite, do a lot of more, put a lot more work into the front end of it during the time when we'd be looking for a label and then have work with that label to actually promote the record properly. And uh, so that's kind of what it was. I mean, we weren't really, it wasn't really time off in a sense that we weren't just like not doing stuff. But right, yeah. we, the writing process was kind of, it started how it normally would when we all kind of get together. And, you know, Anthony would usually come to the come to the table with a chord progression with a vocal melody uh, or ideas and then we sort of hash them out. And then we'll all go home and kind of work on them individually. And, you know, with computers now, we can kind of send garage band files or mp3s of ideas back and forth so that definitely makes it a little bit more helpful to be able to kind right. of pass stuff around without having to do a lot of traveling even yeah. though we all live fairly close together yeah but we did that for about six months and then you know once the whole writing process kind of was coming to once the songs were really coming together a little bit more we rented a, a house up in woodstock where we just went up to for a week all of us and kind of turned our phones and computers off and just kind of sharp kind of honed Honed in on what we want these songs to be, and then uh, and we recorded. Yeah, and then we and then we went, and then we, uh, and we recorded it. Well, the album is definitely. Uh, it seems like you guys experimented a little bit with some newer, uh, some song like types of songs that you've never really done before, and then you kind of had some classic Bayside tunes. Um, do you guys feel like you guys expanded musically on the on this new record? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that if you listen to our first album or this album. Sounds like the same band. I mean, no, yeah, we definitely. might be growing as like musicians and songwriters, but I think we grew into what our band sounds like a long time ago, and just want to always continually be the best at that yeah. as possible. So, you know, if, if there's songs like Mona Lisa, which are super poppy for us, but I think that there's uh, ideas like that earlier in the earlier Bayside catalog too, like songs like I don't know, Landing Feet First or something like that, where you could see kind of the idea of where Mona Lisa went uh, yeah. eventually. Yeah. Uh, how was it working with Wind Up Record this time around? This was the first, uh, first studio release for them. It was good. I mean, they did a lot for us in the sense that they provided opportunities for us that we wouldn't have been that we wouldn't have been able to afford time-wise or financially. Uh, with in terms of the producers that we were using, Gil Norton was something that was kind of a always a reach for us. I'd say that was the biggest thing for sure. Yeah. Just them affording us the opportunity to work with yeah. a great producer. Yeah, great producer. And again, the, it does, a lot of it comes down to the time that we had, having the time to write, and then having the time after we've written to set the record up and do that sort of stuff is really what they had done for us. I mean, they, they treated us well. Yeah, so now you guys kind of are in that, I don't want to say awkward time, but you guys were, it was an early 2011 release. And now you've been on the road, I guess. And, and um, what, what, are you, what are your future plans? Are you guys starting to throw new song ideas around, or are you guys just kind of running with this one as far as we're We're still under a year from our release on this, so I think we'll probably look at that. Laser. Is that the? Boy? <laughs> Is that Steve? Yeah. <laughs> our tour manager has a laser that goes ten miles or something. I don't know. I think it, Does he do it to you guys on stage? <laughs> no. You know what he does do is he does it to people in apartment buildings and hotels from like a mile away, which would be horrifying. I can't imagine being in a room and there's like a laser pops on and you're like on the 30th floor and you're like, oh, well, I don't know what's going to go on. Here. <laughs> Nothing good. Uh, I totally forgot what I was talking about. Oh, uh, where you guys are going? Like, oh, so yeah, it's been out, it's been out for under a year. So I would, I mean, we're not really in a hurry to get back in. I, I think that's another thing with the time that we're talking about is having the opportunity to really try to get this out more and to 
you know, we're going to try to tour a little bit more on this and just try to reach as many people. That, you know, there's still so many people who haven't heard. For as many people that have heard it, there's so many people that haven't. So, yeah. you know, I think that's important for us at our point in our band's life is to. Uh, well, we're certainly the most proud of this album, uh, and we want everyone to hear it. So, on top of our fans that already have bought it within the past ten months or eight months, whatever it's been out, I think we need to also reach new people too. So it's pretty important for us. So that's definitely our goal. So we're not necessarily looking to starting uh, a writing a new album yet. I think we're, we'll start. We'll spend the rest of this year uh, probably doing some overseas stuff and then trying to go on. Uh, Different tours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now this current tour, you would save the day. It's a co-headlining thing. Um, being the headliner, uh, I mean, you guys playing any pranks on the, uh, the younger guys? We're not really. <laughs> you know, it's funny. This we're not really pranky as a band. Mm -hmm. Kind of a. I mean, we're not. That's not to say that we don't have good sense of humor or we're not like total <laughs> sticks in the mud. But we kind of. I don't know. This is, this is a great tour in the sense that there's a there's a huge level of camaraderie in this tour. I think all of the bands we've done. I mean, we've toured with the Avalanche a bunch before mm -hmm. and. Uh, we are, this will be our third run with France. We had done a kind of a B Market East Coast tour with them a few months back, and we just did a week and a half with them, a week with them in Canada and upstate New York. So, I mean, everyone on this tour, and Saves the Day, we've known for a while. I know Anthony does the, the band tour with Chris, so all of the bands are kind of already know each other. So, this is really more than any tour we've done in a long time. This is really like a bunch of friends going on tour together. So, I mean, there is definitely joking around, and I know we all we hang out with everybody in this tour. Uh, but, we're not really. We're I feel not really like we have, We've gone a, a couple tours in a row without doing the prank thing. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys ever pranked coming up? You know, I, I would say this, Chris. If anybody in our band was going to be into pranking, it would be Chris. Yeah. 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 Probably someone would get hurt. If you did. <laughs> be like, what? I just lit a bottle rock and shoved it in your face. What's wrong with that? Well, actually, in the last tour, I wouldn't really call it a prank. He just shot our guitar tech with a BB gun. That's not really a prank. That's just kind of a sick <laughs> move. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, there you go right. first. Chris is a dick. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're not a dick, Chris. What is the uh, now? You guys have been obviously. You guys have been uh, in the music scene for over ten years now. When you guys go on a tour like this, um, how do you guys pick the set list, especially with a new release? We have kind of like a giant list yeah. of the songs that we have played and that we can play. Does it change night to night? Or? Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. a little bit. On this tour, especially well, tonight, when we're playing in the same venue twice, we're really you know it's going to be a very a pretty a pretty different set list in the camp really be unfair to people if we're just like, hey, you came yesterday, guess what? Same stuff. Yeah. <laughs> With the, kind of the internet coming into play, uh, as far as people constantly being in touch with us and requesting things and having their opinions about certain songs, you get a good vibe of what people do want to hear. So it's kind of like there's different tiers of songs for us where it's like this bunch of songs we have to play or else people are going to hate us. And this, you know, a couple more people like this these bunch of songs, people don't really talk about these songs, and then people never talk about these songs. So, I mean, we, we have, you know, we've played live pro probably like 85, 90% of the songs we've ever recorded. Right. So, I mean, I, I feel like we, our set list, there's certain songs we have to play, and then the rest of them we kind of shuffle in and out. Right, and like with the new ones, you try to get as many new ones as you can in there? Yeah. Yeah. The, songs, so the album's 10 songs yeah. long, so I mean, we play at least half of it every night. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, are there any songs, you know, sometimes bands put out an album and there's like one or two songs that they don't want to play live at all. Is that the case with any of the ones that's doing? Or they're, I mean, they're all solid. Yeah. We have actually, actually, I guess Sinking and Swimming is the only song we've never even played it once. And that's, I don't think we haven't played it because we don't want to, it's just, we haven't really worked it out yet. Yeah. I'll probably see the light of day. Yeah. And this this is probably one of the albums that we've been most conscious of every song being something that we could play live. Because yeah. there have definitely been songs on albums in the past where we're like, well, this song is awesome on the record, but I don't know how we would ever pull this off live without either additional instrumentation or tracks. And I don't know, in the nature of our band, it seems to be a little bit more organic and more kind of this, we can produce every, everything that you're hearing is coming from us live. We've never really used tracks and stuff, so it, feel, it would almost feel a little bit cheating to play yeah. some of this stuff. And if it's not going to sound good without that stuff, it just doesn't make sense to. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, we haven't really taken too much crap for the songs that are that I'm even thinking of right now. We I don't think we've even ever heard requested, so I'm not, yeah. I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> All right, well, you guys can check out Bayside on tour. It saves the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, saves the day. I am the Avalanche in Transit. It's a mega tour, and honestly, I was talking to Nick about this earlier. This is this is going to be one of the funnest tours I've ever been on, short of anything unforeseen. But 
all these bands are good friends, and all of these guys on this tour really love playing music, and it's a great, it's a great package. I'm really stoked to be on this tour. I'm not just saying that because you know, <laughs> it's my job. It is my job, but this is an awesome job. Yeah, yeah. This is probably the best job you could probably have in America. Yeah. Hey, Thanks a lot, guys. Hey, my pleasure, man. Thank you, man.